And here we are back again for another day of Trey's Chowdown Live. And I'm here with Chef Mike from the Maple Diner. Right, Maple Leaf Diner. Yes, sir. Nice to see you again, Trey. <laughs> I don't know why I say Maple Leaf. I think I, I guess I just see Maple Leaf. That's everywhere. it. Um, we got uh, <laughs> covered everywhere. So. That's right. Even the diner it is. Yes, yeah, sir. So we're going to go through little hot topics. And then sure. uh, we're going we're, we're, we're to talk to Mike about uh, Maple Leaf. So this last week in Dallas, uh, and I've said this last week on my last show, uh, Terry Black's Barbecue opened up in Dallas and Deep Ellum. And if you live in Dallas or if you're not from Dallas, if you're around the area, you need to go with Terry Black's. It's fantastic. They're from Austin. They throw some great barbecue out there. Old South Pancake House has, is making huge progress on their built new building down in Burleson, Texas. If you want to see their progress, head over to Trace Chowdown Live. And you can see it, uh, they were even working on Thanksgiving Day out there. Welding. Wow. Guys way up in there, welding. Wow. Thanksgiving Day. They, they want that money. Get it done. Want to add, well, he wants it done, they want the money. That's it. Two good combinations. That's it. <laughs> Salary Man Oak Cliff's been open for about four weeks now, and it is a fantastic spot. Have you, have you heard about Salary Man? I have not. 24, 24 seats. 24 seats. 24 seats. <laughs> I guess you cut down on staff that and way. And they don't take reservations. That's it. <laughs> <clears throat> also this week, the Texas Journey came out. I don't know if we can, Ron, if we can see this. Texas Journey came out. Uh, Texas Taco Guide, Taco Trail, Jose, with Texas Monthly, Texas Monthly Talk Letter, who's been on our show, has this new art, has this whole article in Texas Journey. Y'all need to find it, get it, and read it. It's really neat. It's got all kinds of Texas tacos in it, all the way from the border all the way up here. It's a neat deal. And last but not least, last week I was called to go visit, visit a, a, they call the Three Danes Inn. And it's an old historical house, it's 100 years old, and these people, uh, it's got a Danish flair, and these people completely remodeled the house. It's, uh, it has been restored, it's in the historical district. They have a bed and breakfast in the front and a bakery in the back. And mm. it is fantastic. Where's that at? It's right here, it's the new South, South Side Art District in Fort Worth. I don't know. And if you want to see the pictures, just go to Trace Chow Out on Facebook. Um, it is absolutely fantastic. I put a lot of photos. All they had so much. They had baked goods from the front of the house all the way to the back to the to the uh, to the bakery. It was phenomenal. And the funny thing is, they walled it off. So if you want to go to the bakery, you have to go out the front door and walk around the house and go into the bakery in the back, which is neat. But mm -hmm. yeah, I guess they don't want the bakery people bothering bed and breakfast people. Yeah, yeah. People trying to have a nice little bed and breakfast and having people <laughs> lining up to get the bakery. That's right. That's right. All right, Mike. So let me let me put this up. We are going to get in here with Mike, Chef Mike from Maple Leaf Diner in Dallas. And I'll tell you, when I first when I first heard about Maple Leaf about a year ago, but I didn't make it over there right away. I didn't make it over until about six months ago. But when I finally made it over there, boy, I loved it. It was absolutely fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. So tell me something, Mike. So you, where are you from originally? Where's your family from? Windsor, Ontario, Canada, right across from Detroit. Windsor, so, Ontario, Canada. It's not the nice part of Canada. It's more like the <laughs> armpit of Canada. So, <laughs> okay. well, if you're 15 minutes downtown Detroit, you know how yeah. how nice could it be? Oh, right? it's that close to Detroit. Oh yeah, I was actually I lived south of Detroit. It's kind of but funny. Detroit were... was no north of me. Kind of are funny. you saying? <laughs> we're the most southern point of Canada. So where is the border between y'all? It's uh, there's a Detroit River that runs right through, and that's the border. Okay. So literally, like, well, right across the border. It's, it's funny you say that because our ranch in East Texas, our ranch headquarters in East Texas, we're on the Red River. So uh, the river that runs through the back of our ranch mm -hmm. splits us up from Oklahoma. We've lost over the last 20 years, we've lost over 200 acres into the river. Just as For, eroding. Yes, or, 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 or it changes course. Oh, really? Yeah. But as soon as you leave our ranch, go out. Uh, we said we had to go get fuel. And there's, the closest place is about ten miles, and it's across. It's in Oklahoma. So every day I get up, I go to Oklahoma and come right back. That's it. Yeah. So it's about the same thing. It's kind yeah. Of so, you wouldn't think so, but it is. Yeah. So y'all. So you're from. Uh, you grew up there. Yes, sir. You, uh, are your family still living in Canada? Yeah, all my family. I just have uh, my brother lives in Houston, and um, yeah. My, so he came to Texas too. Yeah, we. It's kind of funny. He kind of went off, did something else, ended up in Arizona, ended up wherever. He came kind of the United States first, and we kind of ended up uh, in Texas. Kind of, it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, so. Good place to be. That's it. That's <laughs> why, right? <laughs> so growing up, did your mom cook? No, my family's been in the restaurant business since like 1967. My grandparents, uh, the Deloriers, they started a. Um, it's called Betty and Norm's. Uh, 
Pizza and Chicken Palace. <laughs> they, were, they, they were looking for something to do. They decided to open a restaurant. They didn't even know what they really they were doing when they first started. Chicken Palace. Yeah. Wait, say your last name again. Delorier. That's why I've never said your name because I can't say your there last you name. <laughs> Some of the people from like Louisiana that French is like French Canadian. So okay. my ancestors are actually from Paris. So yeah, ah. and they actually came down to uh, there's a. Um, uh, a park in called uh, Point Pelee National Park, and it's the most uh -huh. southern tip of Canada. And there's actually a Delorier house in that park oh, where wow. my ancestors came, and you can actually go see the house and see how they live. They're kind of like the first settlers in the area, oh, so it's kind of wow. cool, a little history from my family. So oh, that's that's neat. Yeah, and um, and then yeah, my grandparents decided to start a um, start a business, and they wanted to do a, a restaurant, so they went at it and. Learned it, and actually, our our chicken breading recipe now is a derivative of her her famous chicken breading recipe from back in the day. So, so when they started, how were you when they started? You had to be. I wasn't born. I was born in seventy seven. So 77. they were in the restaurant for whatever. My my um, family, my mom and my dad. My dad was the only brother. He had uh, uh, five sisters. So, and he was the only boy. So he was uh, cleaning the restaurant when he was younger and pizza delivery. And he ended up meeting my mom. My mom was a waitress. So he drove the waitresses home at the end of the night after the pizza delivery. And oh. they got together and ended up doing that way. So it was kind of... If, if they didn't know, well, how they decide? Did they just open up a restaurant on a whim? Yeah, they just kind of... They knew a little bit about some stuff. But they were just like, you know what? This area needs a good restaurant, some good food. And we're going to make it. My, um, my grandmother used to tell me that, uh, you know, they were really poor back in the day and we make our gravy, our brown gravy, which we got our lovely poutine over here. Yeah. So this brown gravy, we don't make it like, a, like a, a, a normal cook, so make it with a roux. We actually make the beef broth and then we use a flour slurry after to thicken it. Well, when you do that, you end up with little flour lumps. Well, they were so poor growing up, they made the gravy for the restaurant and they took all those little beef flavored flour lumps and they used that to serve the kids and eat for dinner for the family. <laughs> like that's how, how, that's how my grandma was telling me that story. Are you that's how, yeah, that's how poor they were when they were starting out and getting things going on. And so yeah, just you know, homemade food and just using every bit that you can. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Those are good stories. Those are little stories you, you want to be sure and tell her about. Yeah, it. for sure. And just kind of and we grew up from there. My my mom and uh, my dad, they actually lived in a little house behind the restaurant that my grandparents owned. It was actually attached to the restaurant. So wow. for one of the youngest years, I was like basically living in a restaurant uh, growing up too. So, so what did you, so, so that they served pizza? And what yeah, else? they started with um, Betty and Norm's Pizza Palace, Petty Pizza and Chicken Palace. <laughs> and then they ended up selling that when they moved out farther to this little tiny town called St. Joachim. And had like 600 people in this why whole entire sell, town. Why would they move? I don't know really why. They ended up buying a bigger building. Okay. And they ended up actually doing this big seafood buffet. They had perch, you know, like yellow lake perch, which yeah. I die for now, and frog yeah. legs. And they did seafood and they did fish and chips. And they had this big Friday buffet. And it was kind of funny. People used to come from Windsor, which is 45 minutes away. People came from all over. And they, I think the restaurant held 500 people. And in this little town of 600 people, and they packed it all the time because people came from everywhere for the good food people people will drive for good food they will they I, will drive for good I, food i drove 100 140 miles round trip yesterday to eat i mean if people drive for good food yes they drive a lot <laughs> for food so it's kind of it's kind of interesting yeah it's basically uh been in my blood you know to uh yeah and i started uh well, well, hang on you but y'all lived in a restaurant so when you moved where'd you move to when you moved to get the new place where'd y'all live there well that was actually the restaurant that we moved to lived in when they okay. sold there that's the one we moved into okay. and then Later on, I think my uh, my dad got out of the restaurant business, and he got in the factory. Was a, Windsor is a really blue collar town, uh, so he worked at Chrysler's, and my mom was a oh, nurse. Right. So um, is is Windsor still that way? Yeah, it's pretty blue collar, okay. factory driven. So um, yeah, definitely, they got a lot of the renewable energy kind of stuff going on there to kind of help spur some things up. And the housing market there is really booming really good because everybody's moving down from Toronto where like, it's kind of, you know, where everybody's moving from California where the high house prices are so high, right. they're moving down there because you can get, you know, cheap housing compared to that. So do you stay in, you still stay in contact to be reading yeah. a lot of stuff about Canada? Yeah, I go, and I go up there a little bit. I'm kind of on the funeral and wedding schedule though. I don't really, <laughs> I don't really go too, too often. <laughs> <laughs> the two things I don't like, yeah. funerals and weddings. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I was just 
up there in the summer a couple of times, so it was, uh, it was definitely uh, pretty interesting. So going That's back crazy. to the stuff and seeing everything, how, how, how things change so fast. So. so once you start cooking, how old were you when you started cooking? 13, I started being a line cook. At, at, at the restaurant? Yeah, it was that time, it was called the Country Boy Tavern. Country Boy Tavern. Country Boy Tavern. Right up your alley, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> there was a little uh, little country boy on the side with a little cowboy hat. Are you so, serious? Oh, yeah. And they had a little um, that little bar area with pool tables and a big restaurant. It was a big place. So That's yeah. funny. Yeah, in this tiny little town without even a street light. Like one stop sign in this little town in a convenience store and a 600 person restaurant. So, so how did you start off? Did you, did you start washing dishes or something? Or what, no, before, I just started that, right start on working? the line. I was actually started cutting the grass of the restaurant first. And, you know, I was out in the county. So when I started working, I was, uh, you know, hay baling for the farmer down the street. Right. And, you know, I was, like I said, I was always out for the money. I was always that kind of entrepreneur spirit. Even when I was little, when I was eight years old, I used to catch catfish down in the river and sell them to the guys at the end of the street that used to come every week fishing when I was eight years old. My parents would say, where'd you come down for the money? I was like, I sold my catfish. <laughs> That's pretty good. Right? Pretty so, resilient. Yeah, so we ended up, um, and then I started cooking. Um, and, you know, we were, uh, you know, slower during the week. So, you know, we did the whole thing to save the labor. The cooks did their dishes. We didn't have a dishwasher during the week. So you kind of did both. But uh, yeah, geez, when I was in high school, I was working full, full time, 40 hours a week, going through high school, working on weekends all the time. That's why I feel like I really didn't get in a whole lot of sports because every time when everybody was at home watching sports, I was always working, you working, know? Working, yeah. Slicing roast beef and <laughs> frying perch, you know? What, 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 is, what was the, when you first started out and you were 13, what was the most memorable experience you had? What, 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 was, what, did, you, what did you enjoy the most when you started out? I mean, what, what made you want to get up and go out and be, be cooking line? The rush, you know, the yeah. busy, the busy, the craziness, yeah. you know, having a slew full of bills and, you know, <laughs> being sure to cook and being under the wire and have to crank it out. And, you know, it's kind of funny. I feel, um, uh, you know, I feel that's the kind of the fun part that I get. I feel like a lot of, you know, chefs and people that work in the kitchen, they're, you know, taking their time and making these proper recipe and doing whatever. But real in the kitchen, it's about cooking it out, making it good every time, yeah, and, 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 and being busy. You're yeah. like slamming it, right? If you're a successful place, you have to push out some plates. So being you're creative. It's, it's, no, it's no way to do it. But, and, and to be able to make it great and excellent and great presentation while being busy is, is the key, I think. So you, work, you worked on a line. Uh, how long did you work on a the line there? I've, I worked for... A couple years and uh, our years and years and I, I I left the kitchen for a little bit I tried to do an electrical apprenticeship once for the summer but I was still and at that time I uh, my family actually sold the restaurant to somebody else and um, I went to try to get this they sold the restaurant so I went to try to get this electrical apprenticeship when I okay. got out of high school yeah but then I kept serving. I started serving. That's when I started being a server. Okay. And I remember this still to this day. I remember this girl named Glenda. This old, this old lady. She's kind of cute older lady. She's been a career server, and she taught me all kind of things on how to serve and how to make tips and how yeah. to do everything. And so I was doing the electrical apprenticeship during the day and serving at night till two in the morning. And then uh, one of my other family members ended up buying another uh, restaurant in um, in Windsor, and uh, we were. Um, She's like, I'm going to hire you to come and be my kitchen manager and run, run the kitchen. And so you learned how to serve. Which yeah, is I learned important. how to serve, learned how to cook. Learned a little bit of front of the house. So then she's like, hey, I'm going to hire you to be my kitchen manager. She's like, but there's one problem. I hired three chefs with way more experience than you. It's going to be kind of challenging. I don't know how you're going to make out. <laughs> but you know what? And even these guys, I was 19 at the time. These guys come in, these like 35-year-old guys are thinking, okay, this little punk kids, my boss, right? But, uh, you know, after a little bit being in the kitchen, they're like, okay, this guy, knows, what, this guy knows what's up. He knows <laughs> what's up and has got going on. So, and it worked on from there. And then... Um, you, did you learn a lot from them? Yeah, I did. A lot, a lot. There was this uh, one chef, Marty. I learned a lot. I learned a lot from my family. This one chef, Marty, taught me a lot of things. He was good at... I learned to take some good things and leave some bad things. So everybody, he, was, he was a famous chef, one of those chefs that uh, couldn't control his food costs. He wanted to make these over-the-top, outrageous things that you couldn't possibly sell for the price that you need to sell it for, right? Two of the worst things, yeah. labor costs and food costs. Oh, yes, for sure. So he was really bad at the food costs. He, he wasn't really good at that. So, But I, I learned, you know, I took the good. He had some 
cool techniques and some cool things that I learned. And, um, and then we went on from then. And then um, I ended up buying the business from my family, me and my brother. And at the time, we grew it. We had uh, three restaurants, or two restaurants and a bar. It was Pepper's Bar and Grill. Dante's Dance Bar was like a 550-person club. Dante's Dance Bar. Yes, sir. You would have liked it, Trey. Girls dancing up on the bar. <laughs> it, was, it was great. And uh, we had this place called Michael's Restaurant, and it was in a Ramada hotel. And then we did all the room service for the whole hotel, and it had like a 200-seat restaurant that we did as so well. So kind of had a captured audience, too. Yeah, and they were right on a corner. And downtown Windsor is... I don't know, kind of equivalent, I guess, to Austin, that, that 6th Street, okay. where it's like yeah. three blocks of bar, restaurant, bar, restaurant, yeah. bar, restaurant, just tons of liquor licenses. And we did that good for a while. And then we ended up, um, you know, the Canadians, they changed all their rules. They stopped the no smoking. The passport law came in across the border, it kind of crushed business a lot. And then. Wait, that, wait, oh, oh, wait. I didn't, when, did, when did they start that? You know, around 2000, you know, when the. You know, when the towers went down. That's right. right? That's right. Then, that's it, right, then that's they right. went crazy on the. That's right. Because you could just go with your driver's license. Yeah, you could go across with your driver's right. license. Right. And then a lot of. Not everybody would always go get a passport or pay right. for a passport. And then um, everybody else was still smoking, and Canada went all non smoking. So that hurt the bar scene really good. A lot of people stopped going kind of over there. So then. Um, people like to smoke when they drink. Yeah, and I was always looking to kind of get to the United States, get to that American dream. I was always going looking for the, <laughs> looking for the next thing. So uh, We all are. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and, it's, and it's funny enough, one of my, uh, my other aunts, who currently owns a restaurant uh, called Beach, uh, Beach House Grill in Canada right now, she had a little scene on TV store, this little infomercial retail store. And she wanted to go to the United States. So she wanted to come down to the United States. So I was like, okay, that sounds good. I'm down. So I went and managed her store, did that for a year. And then we came down here and opened a retail store. And then when I was here and doing this retail for a bit, I was looking around. I was like, man, people eat out so much in Dallas yeah. and, and Frisco. I moved into Frisco. And oh, up yeah. there, it was like the land of the franchises. So you yeah, know what I mean? Was, there was yeah. very few... Well, that was, that, that, that was the last, that was, Frisco was one of the last to turn. There was yes. a lot of farmland up there. Yeah, so, and it was, like, when I moved there, it was really not that much. You know, the <coughs> colony wasn't blown up as much as it is now. Um, so, and then I was like, and then every restaurant I went to, I was like, it's a Tuesday, and it was a crappy restaurant, and the place is three quarters full. And you know what, I found that there was a lot of really good restaurants, I think higher-end restaurants in Dallas, yeah. but there was no really good, like, just casual restaurant you yeah. can just go and grab something to eat some good homemade food where it's not out of a can or not out of a freezer and i'm mm. like man they need a diner there's no diners there's no homemade food some good breakfast and then i was itching for some pea meal bacon you know <laughs> some canadian pea meal bacon i can't find it down here <laughs> can't find it down yeah. here so and some butter tarts i love my butter tarts so then i was like you know what let's let's make a little canadian uh Diner. Canadian spin on a diner. So was 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 where you are now. Where you opened up for first time? Yeah, it took us forever to find a location because no one really wanted to lease to us because we didn't have any American. Um, yeah, you know we ha we haven't been in the states before. Yeah. So well, you got a great spot. Yeah, it took so, a while to find. So he so so he they worked with you there obviously. Yeah, well they. You know, I went. In, it's all timing, Trey. Everything's yeah. timing. At that yeah. time, they were doing. It, the, it is timing. They were doing the construction on 635, so you couldn't even get across on Preston. It was a oh, disaster. Oh, that's right. I remember, I remember that. Everything was really slow, but um, I kind of knew it was finishing up. I had some inside scoop. Knew it was finishing up, so I, I kind of snuck in there, and uh, yeah. And you know, it's a good location. It was. It's not the best location, but it's a good location. It's a good location. I mean, it, it's it's uh, out in front, in front, and on the side. Yes. There's lots of traffic. So. So yeah. So, and, uh, and yeah, and then here we are, and it's been, uh, it was four years in September. Is it the same longer than that? You know what? It does, longer and shorter, depends on the day. You know? <laughs> you know, well, depends I did, on the I day. Did, have you always had the bar in back? Yes. Okay, because I, I didn't see it the first time I was there. I didn't yeah. see it the second time I was there. I'm going to do a little renovation on that uh, to kind of fix it and clean it up. We're about to do, you know, do a little renovation in the restaurant, kind of change things up just a little bit, you know, because we went in on, uh, you know, just such a, you know, grinding it out, shoestring yeah. budget, and no, just get the door open. That's you know, and so, um, so now we're out to you know, kind of freshen it up a little bit, and uh, you know, and keep going. 
the landlord was bugging me go next door and make it bigger. But I was like, you know what? I like that. I, I was like just fixing. To, I was just fixing to ask you that. So has he he has he asked you about how, how big is next door? Well, the age there was an Asian restaurant, right. this Chinese place next to us. They burned the place down. So these guys, like over a year ago, they literally caught on fire, and we had to close for like five days. So, but but the fire didn't come over. It didn't come over. We smoke. had smoke damage. So yeah. we had that's to, the we, worst. Yeah, that's the so worst. we had to fix everything and close for five days. So now they blew that space open. They have this big square, like seven thousand square foot space next door. But you know, was what? the restaurant that big? No, my restaurant's about forty. No, no, his square. restaurant was seven thousand. No, but there was a couple spaces right around it that okay. were empty. So they, they just, just kind of like out. blew it all out, and they're trying to get me there. But um, I'm a little frugal or cheap, as like you say. And the landlord, you know what? Uh, they 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 see money, right? So they're trying to get me, you know, and I just didn't like, I was like, you know what? That's not worth it. You have to be frugal in the restaurant business. If you're you not, to. guess what? You won't have a restaurant left. You know, I got a saying, you know, you just watch the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but a lot of people in the restaurant business don't understand that. Yeah. They want to open up a restaurant to be glorified. And they want to find the best space and whatever what it costs. And they want to have the high dollar drinks. And, and all, what, that's just, and, and, and eventually people get, your investors or the person giving you money will get tired of giving you money. Yeah. It just no. all, and that's know. not the goal. The goal is to make a living and make money, not yeah. spend money. I was just talking that someone's like, oh, I did $10 million in sales. And I was like, okay, well, how much profit did you make? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because sales really don't matter. Yeah. It's how much you got at the that's bottom right. line. Right. You know, that's right. a, that's what matters, right? So That's it's right. about you know watching those pennies and uh, and uh, you know <clears throat> you know spending the money where it's spent. You know I you know we just um, you know we spend money on um, you know we we're just talking about this. Someone's saying your chicken's so good, your chicken breading and your chicken's so good. So we we spent the money to buy like a medium chicken breast, not these huge jumbo chicken breasts that are flooding the market right. that everybody gets that are cheap. So we spend right. the money to get quality starting products and it right. just makes a difference at the end so you you can't be cheap on the important stuff but you know you have to watch the pennies on the stuff that really well, doesn't what matter you, what you do is the, the money that you're that you do that with by doing that it creates customers making them come back it, it creates repeat business for because sure they, they may not know when they first get there but once they eat it one time and it creates and you keep that quality and you keep the good products coming then it just they keep keeps a repeat business oh for sure you've got to have a huge repeat business there oh i think on my pos it said it just tracks for my last credit cards for my last 200 transactions and i think um the week on that i think it's like 85 percent repeat yeah. business so yeah. like in just in the last 200 transactions yeah, yeah. see the average person my girlfriend's like this and she, since she's they get me, stuck in their bubble. They no, let the me tell you, and that's okay for that's for you. That's good. <laughs> but what I've learned in a restaurant, I've been in restaurants all my life, and people don't want to drive. They they, they want to stay in a certain square mile circumference. That's what they want to do. Every once in a while, for an anniversary or Christmas or a wedding or something, they may go out or travel for a holiday vacation. They will go out and eat somewhere else. But for the most part, they want to stay in their bubble. Yeah. And their bubble may be two miles, maybe four miles, maybe five miles. So whatever's in their bubble. If it's good, oh, it's the best place That's I've lived in my life. I can't believe how good this place is. Well, people are busy. Life's yeah. hectic now. Everybody's running around with the kids and their job yeah. and trying to do stuff. So you know what? Some of that driving takes time. You know, even me, I used to live up in Frisco and we opened it in Dallas. I was like, I got to move down Dallas. Now I live like seven minutes from the diner. So now oh, okay. that's now that's way you, you don't realize how much life changing that is when you live a little bit closer to your job. Oh, it's huge. Right? It's it's it changes your life. Especially there because the traffic over there at that particular spot is is, is horrible. Yes. Yes. E even when it's flowing, it's still. Yes. It's stay still on bad. the side roads. Get off the <laughs> yeah, highways. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to drive up and down the tollway anymore. <laughs> Although it did get better since they widened it, but I don't have to. Yeah, drive, yeah. I don't have to fight that traffic. No, you know what I feel like? I feel like as soon as they got it widened, it was out, it was out of date already. Oh. That's you know what, what? I feel like. They definitely should have. They definitely should have upped the ante a little bit. Yeah. But I think they're a little bit landlocked on there. There's not they, too much more they, they can do on that. They double deck that, but they're yeah. not going to do that. No, that would be a monstrosity. So when, you found, so when you found the location, did you already have your name or did you find, did you have the name and the location? No, we went through all kinds of so different So tell me how names. you did that. How would you do that? We just brainstormed a couple names and we started asking different people. We did like Facebook surveys and my wife's pretty smart. That's why I married her. So she, she grabbed on some of those things. You know, let's put this out. You know, we can think all we want. But let's put it out for them people and get some people to vote and sure. see what they like. So, you know, we wanted to do a, um, I wanted to be like slightly kind of Canadian, but I really didn't want to 
ram Canadian down everybody's throat. Right. You know what I mean? Because if you look around, there is some Canadian stuff up in the diner. But if people don't notice it, sometimes they're like, why are you called Maple Leaf? And I was like, oh, I'm forgetting it. They're like, oh, I get it now. You know what I mean? It's there, but it's not like crazy in your face. Well, I saw the Maple Leaf and knew right away. But I guess, you know, I mean, just, some just don't know. You're in the, you're in the yeah. business. Yeah, you I'm, know what's going on. I you're just looking know the Leaf. For, that's it. The leaf, there you go. There so, you. so. Maple Leaf is a is a very unusual name. So yes, there's none of the because some restaurants open up and there's there's already four of them that same name yes. or close to it. Yes, there's no Maple Leaf anywhere. No, that, that I saw. And I, no, I Google. There's no no not down here anyway. No, I think um, I think in New Jersey I said something that was kind of like Maple Leaf, but it was um, I think it was closed. I kind of looked at it and see yeah. whatever. And I don't know. I trademarked it and did whatever. So it yeah. it passed all that stuff. So you did all of it, didn't you? Yeah. Well. So what was the very first thing, when you opened your restaurant up, what was the very first thing that you said that you wanted to serve? What, what, what was it, when you said, this is what, on your menu, and you said, that's what I want, I, want, I gotta have this on my menu, gotta have it. The Canadian it? bacon. Canadian bacon. Yeah, the real Canadian bacon, not, yeah, the, not, the, little not round, the ham stuff that no, you guys serve here I don't Canadian like that bacon. Stuff. So when you call and you get Canadian, and I said you have bacon, don't we have Canadian bacon? No, you don't. That ain't Canadian bacon. That's a little sorry, little round thing. What yeah, that's like ham <laughs> is what it is that you call Canadian bacon. Yeah. So tell everybody what Canadian bacon is. So Canadian bacon is like a cured pork loin. And um, it actually, it's called pea meal bacon in Canada. Right. And it's called pea meal because back in the day, the Eng um, from English, when the troops were starving and getting hungry over in Canada, they'd bring lots of food over from uh, England and Europe. So they used to salt cure these pork loins, and they used to roll them in crushed peas to wick away the moisture so they wouldn't go bad on the ships to get over. Okay. So that's how it got its name, pea meal bacon. But then the transfer, they stopped using uh, pea meal, and they used a cornmeal. They coated the outside with a cornmeal. Okay, back up. So they would they would they would they would take the pork salt loin, cure. They put salt on it. Yeah. And then they crush peas. Yeah. Like and wrapped it and then, and then, and then so rolled it, put, rolled it, rolled it in peas, and then stacked it on the ships and, and shipped ship. it across. Shipped it okay, across. Okay. And that, and that, that the that salt. That was like a cure the, between the salt and then the pea meal to like wick away any extra moisture right. would kept it from going bad on the so journey. So I'm guessing when they got there, it was it was it was good, kind of like prosciutto or something. Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, kind of cured. I think they cured a little bit more back in the day because now they do like more of a a wet, um, yeah, it's I, like a I wet brine that, yeah. that, you know, you can't leave it out like they did back in the day, right? Yeah. So um, they, they cured it a little harder, I think, than they do now. But uh, it's unbelievable. It's, you know, I think it's like a cross between ham and bacon. Some people think it's kind of more hammy. Um, but um, More hammy. More hammy. There you <laughs> go. More hammy than more hammy. Uh, more hammy than bacon. People are like, it doesn't taste like bacon because they're thinking regular bacon. But it's, you know, it's one of the things I, I, yearned for it not having yeah. it you know because it's like a staple it's like you know and the poutine yeah we poutine, had to have yeah. the poutine like we yeah. got our pot roast poutine yeah. back there you know our poutine that's as common as onion rings here like all the mcdonald's and wendy's they all serve poutine right. up in canada so oh I, oh I know that so it's it's all it's everywhere there everywhere like it's so it's like just like onion rings. So it's like fries. so when you go somewhere here, not everybody has it here, but when they do make it, it's all it seems like it's all decorated up. So, but you can go anywhere in Canada and get it. Like like you get a French fry here, at McDonald's. Yeah, I think at some like gas stations they sell poutine. <laughs> like it's like, hey, it's, it's like you know, like it is like, pretty good, right? Though. It yeah, is pretty damn good. It is. Uh, it's one of my one of my favorites too. So um, and so and I was like, you know what? And it's kind of funny. It didn't catch on down in Texas earlier. You guys eat a lot of gravy down here. Yeah, I don't oh, see why I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't see why not. Yeah. Even up in Canada too, just fries and gravy. Right? Yeah. That's a big thing. People will take and... their French fries and dip them into gravy. Yes. But they don't do it like that. Yes. So um and then you know we just looked at the area. We took a little bit of the southern stuff coming in, right. you know, the you know the chicken and waffles. You know, you got chicken and waffles is big in the south. Yeah. Huge. And then also in the area too we have um uh, a little bit of Jewish food. We have some lox and lockies, lox and lockies, and we have a lox benedict. You know, smoked salmon because we're right in the area of a large Jewish community. So you know, you can't, you know, opening a restaurant, you can't be ignorant to where you're at. Right. No, you can't. You know what I mean? You can't yeah. be ignorant to where you can. You, you can, can be if you, you don't want to be in business. Yeah. You know, you can. <laughs> yeah. You want to open a barbecue joint in the middle of you know <clears throat> someone that doesn't eat a lot of barbecue. You know, you got to be. You got to be conscious of yeah, what's, but, what's you know going what, on. Though, a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of a lot of people are so narrow minded. When you open up a restaurant, you have to be even if you're a chef, you have to be able to look at the the turning factors around you. The people that work for you, the environment. I mean, it's all. It's not just a menu, and, and it's it's crazy. We grew up in survival in Canada, and Canada, like you got to think, Canada. I think right now there's only 36 million people in all of Canada. 
there's almost the same amount of people in Texas. Yeah. Right? So the, the population is spread out crazy. So in Canada, when we had a restaurant, so my family, you know, has taught us we had to, you know, cast a wide net. You had to have you Everything. Know, chicken, fish. Yeah. You had to because yeah. or else you're not going to attract enough people right. to do it, which you know what, uh, which made our menu a little daunting, taking that kind of same sure. thing. But now sure. I think, you know, try to narrow it down a little bit because, you know, you look at some of these restaurants here, they serve like two things and they're lined up the door because, let's face it, here there's so many options. It depends on their target, but if, if it's a, a taco, it's barbecue, they're yes. targeting a certain niche, so that's, that's not the same as what you do. Yes, correct. Your menu's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's big, but I mean, I, for what you do. But uh, let's just tell everybody. So... What he's got is he's got a fantastic, he, he says he's a diner, but he's more than a diner <laughs> because he also has alcohol, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. I made you a nice little Bloody Caesar. Yeah. another Canadian thing. Yeah, look right here. It's another uh -huh. Bloody Caesar. So that's Caesar. kind of one of our special This is called dishes. a Bloody Caesar? Bloody Caesar. So in the, what makes it Caesar, it's almost like a Bloody Mary, but um, it's made with Clamato juice. Hopefully uh -huh. you're not allergic to shellfish. No. All right, there you I'm go. I'm allergic to anything. There you go. Well, Except being broke. There you go. <laughs> well, eating out as much as you do. There you go, right? And the Clamato juice, what it does, I think it, what it makes it better, it's a little bit saltier. That's good. It's a little bit saltier, right? And um, the, um, yeah, we can do a nice little garnish. you got to put some bacon on it to garnish, I'm a, right? I'm a, yeah, I'm going to try this bacon right here. Right yeah, now. our bacon's really good, too. That's another thing. Although I'm cheap on a lot of things, I'm not cheap on my bacon. You know, you can't be cheap you can't on your bacon. You can't be cheap on your oh. bacon. Same with our breakfasts. People say, oh, my God, that's a lot of food. You know, there's, you know, on our bacon, we don't give three slips of bacon. Our basic bacon breakfast is four slips of bacon. You can see the size of the thickness of that bacon. There's a lot of money in bacon on the plate. Same with sausage. You know, we don't, you can't, you can't cheat. You got to give some people some food, right? Yeah. Takeout really take boxes are very common at the This time. is really good. What's around the top? It's a celery salt. It's good. Yeah, just a nice celery salt. And uh, I thought I tasted that, but it tasted a little different. What? What was there something else in there besides celery salt? No, it's just a celery different. salt in there, and then it's maybe a, it's the clamato. I'm maybe the clamato, and then a little bit of Tabasco, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, mm. and uh, That's just you know delicious. some olives. Yeah, it's good. It's common. People drink those. I think in Canada they're more popular. Caesars people drink Caesars all the time. Where people in the United States here like drink Bloody Marys, but they drink them just in the morning. But people drink Caesars. All the time. All the time. Yeah, I just drank. So did you, I just did a Bloody Mary art list. Did you see it? I, I did, did not. I did a big Bloody Mary, best Bloody Mary. Did, oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> I want to tell you a funny story. All so, right. um I like funny stories. I, you know, I like stories. So I saw this. I, I coded this sandwich wrong. And I don't know if you noticed it or who, who does your Facebook? Uh, myself. And, okay. Uh, yeah, and well, again, we have another company that helps us out. Somebody in there? Yeah, Miss okay. Catherine over there <laughs> okay, helps me somebody out. Somebody in there. Okay, so I put this picture of this good-looking sandwich on your thing, and uh, I get a message like two hours later from Jonathan and Jonathan's diner. He says, hey, man, that's my arm. That's my sandwich. He's got, he's got, he's got sandwich great food, but that's my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that's it already funny. had like 100 likes, and it had like 30 comments. I had to. I had to, we had to take it down, man. Like, oh, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't even see that. Well, every once in a while it happens, but I take so many pictures of food and eat so much stuff. It's just literally, that's happened to me like three or four times this year. Just, I just, I just, when you, like yesterday, I took probably 50 or 60 pictures in one day. And it was just funny, but I mean, I take care of it right away. It's just, yeah. it was, it Somebody was very else funny. printed a publication like that. I forget what it was. I forget what other breakfast place it was, but it was a, it was some other breakfast place, and they put our, like, waffles or pictures of something under their name in, the, in a printed publication, too. I forget uh, what it was, like, over a year ago. I forget someone did oh that. Oh, so my it, gosh. It was, it was kind of funny, too. So. All right, so we're going to talk about your menu because I sure. love me. Now, this is – I had this when I went there. You had, No, you had the chicken, bacon, and waffles. I had the chicken, bacon, and waffles, this yeah. Is, this, is a, this is a new one that we come up because we're, we're putting out a little bit of new menu, and we're changing okay. it. And this is a uh, – Chicken sausage waffle, where because we got to be Texas. Some nice Texas smoked sausage. Again, look at this thing. Combine, thing combining combining the uh, Canadian with some uh, Texas. Look at that. Comes with some white gravy, some maple syrup, some strawberries, and whipped cream. We put it all on the side because a lot of people sometimes don't like everything all together. Your you chicken know? is so damn good. It's my it's my it's my family's recipe of the breading, and like I said, using using good quality chicken. You know. And these things right here. These cream puffs. Oh yeah, everybody freaks out for the cream puffs. Dude. I, I almost hit Those my are on top of the chicken bacon. I waffles. almost slapped my girlfriend's hand. I said, get your hand away from mine. <laughs> these are fantastic. You make these in house, right? Yeah, we are, and we top them. So, yeah, put a little. So, you said a while ago, excuse me, smack them. Yeah, no problem. You said a while ago, talk about people having food in a can. Yes. I want you to tell everybody, I knew right away when I saw your menu, 
You don't, you don't, everything is prepared in house fresh with fresh products, fresh ingredients. I have some things that I don't make. I don't make my sausage, I don't make the country well. sausages, but we make our hamburger buns. We make, you know what? I, if I run across a product that's good, that is good, I'm not an ego guy. If their yeah. product's better than mine and saves me some steps, I'll use it, but it's got to—it's got to pass the test. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll use somebody else's stuff, but it's got to pass the test. And a lot of times, somebody else's best try doesn't beat mine, so then you end up making stuff. That's good. All right. Like I didn't bring you, but like my mozzarella sticks are ridiculous, and someone—no one makes mozzarella sticks anymore. But we make our mozzarella sticks, and they are just—they are just. So you off. don't take them out of the freezer and throw them in. No, sir. We bread them, hand bread them. It's a pain in the butt, but they are the best darn mozzarella stick you'll ever have. My poor fryer guys don't like it. They gotta bread. <laughs> they gotta bread everything. They gotta bread their mushrooms. They gotta bread their pickles. They gotta bread their mozzarella sticks. They gotta bread their mozzarella cheese or their pizza burger. Okay, so hang on. Now we're gonna talk about this. This. The, I'm gonna I'll hold this up. Hang on, man. Yeah. I love all the maple leaf stuff. I was telling your your wife. There's nothing. This is the only red that's ever gone with anything in the studio. There you go. <laughs> Canadian red. It <laughs> sure is fun. It's meant to be. Look at this burger right here. Look at that. A pizza burger. Pizza burger. Ron, pizza burger. I think he was eyeing that thing when we were setting up he before was. we started. So. These are your mushrooms? Yeah, our breaded mushrooms. Again, made them as in-house. A lot of people buy breaded mushrooms, but I don't like it because they're like grease balls. You know what I mean? You, you cop they into it and it's like grease, it's so yeah. all grease. And so you got to make them from scratch. So what's on a pizza burger? So we start with our homemade bun. We um, take our uh, ground beef and uh, we do a um, half pound patty. And then on top there is a mix of a bolognese sauce. There's bolognese sauce, there's ground beef and uh, tomato sauce and spices. There's pepperoni, there's onions, there's uh, bell peppers and hot peppers in there. And we saute that and warm it up on the grill, is, put it on there. Is that fried cheese? Yeah, we take a big slab of the oh. uh, the mozzarella cheese, we bread it and fry it. It's not going to be as gooey any now. We've been, uh, we've been talking for I 30 know. minutes. I know. But normally, I normally it. a goo is right out and drips right down your face, which makes it all nice. That tastes really good. Yeah. What's on the breading? It's uh, you know, it's a secret. It's a little. <laughs> well, I could tell you, but you know, you know how that saying goes. Me. You know how that saying goes. This but is awesome. A, and then we top it with our breaded mushrooms. And uh, so, where did inspiration come from for this dish? This is kind of a makeup of my fa family recipe, kind of okay. hanging down. From the old pizza, the old... Uh, yeah, yeah. I think my grandmother started a version of this pizza burger, so and it just kind of grew from there. Grew from so. There. And what's the sauce? It's a dill sauce. It's a, it's a made sauce in-house. I bet that's good. People love it. People want I'm a for, sauce. That is good. People ask it for jars. So we use that for our mushrooms, or you know, you can dip your that's burger really in good. it, put it on there. So, Yeah, yeah it's... Um, I'm going to get a big bite of that when we get through. Yeah, I'm, I figured you would. Can you grab that for me? Yes, I'll put sir. this up there. This is our poutine, and this is our pot roast poutine. Can you say poutine? Poutine. I'm not going to tell you what I called it one yeah. time in a restaurant. <laughs> it was not a good thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we Look use some real cheese curds. You know, a lot of other people do some poutine around town. You can start to see it more and more. Yeah. But no offense to anybody else. They just don't do it right. Yeah. You know, people put mozzarella on there. You need That's a white cheddar cheese curd. Where do you get your cheese curds from? Do you make them or do you get No, that's from Wisconsin. Again, I make too much stuff. There's some things I just can't make, you know? it's and, and Wisconsin cheese curds are awesome. My dad gets them in bags, uh, uh, that gets them uh, vacuum sealed. Yes, sir. And gets them overnighted or whatever. And it's yes, sir. Really good. Yeah, and um, Montreal is where the poutine started. And actually, poutine, they said, is a, a French name for um, like being a mess, like a mess on the plate. The people that kind of started it out there, right? But uh, we do our homemade fries, of course. You know, it's funny again. A lot of the things we do, I don't. We don't use a lot of really crazy ingredients. You know, we use simple stuff. I was, you know, you said that about food and buying stuff. The food suppliers don't really like us because we're buying sugar, flour, yeah. credit. You know right, what I mean? Right. Because they don't make as right. much money on all that stuff unless you're buying processed food. But. Um, we make our own fries. It's amazing how many people don't make their fries. But you know what? It is a little bit of a pain in the butt sometimes. But so many people don't make their fries anymore. I think it's so important to make your fries. Oh. I think it makes a huge difference. Oh, for sure. I definitely agree. I saw when we were there, I was watching all the orders and stuff come out. And I could tell they were, y'all, y'all, man, they were absolutely, they would be awesome. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah, and you put our beef gravy on there and uh, with our pot that roast on there. Yeah, yeah that yeah. gravy is pretty good. We, cook, we make a lot of gravy. Yeah. We make a lot of gravy. You make more than one kind of gravy? Uh, just our white gravy. There are, we do more of this. Like, I think this week, I think we made 45 gallons of brown gravy oh in a week. Oh, my gosh. 
Yeah, we're we're busy. You wouldn't, you know what? Your food is all very healthy, very 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 comfort food, right? Yes. You would not think that in the city of Dallas it's so health conscious that that, that you would, but they stack up outside to come into yeah, your restaurant. Well, you know what? And the cool thing, there's one thing of being healthy and one thing of being real because all our food is like real food. Right. You know what I mean? So, and even this gravy, you know, um, it's not because I don't use a you know, lard or fat roux to start, actually not as bad for you as some of the other gravies because I don't, we're only using a flour slurry to slurry. It's not like it's gluten free or anything, but it's not as, it's not as, it's not as fattening. How many requests do you get for gluten free in your place nowadays? It's getting more. It's definitely getting more. Definitely more and more. People why, are, why are people requesting 10 years ago, 20 or 30 years ago? What happened? It's kind of more of a trend than a problem now That's is, what, is what it is. It's, it's kind of, you know, and it's one thing to, it is, you know what, a lot of diets nowadays, a lot of things, you know, gluten, I guess the problem is too, is there's so much processed food now. Yeah, you're right. And then most of the processed food has gluten in it, right? Even when it doesn't need gluten, they use gluten for stabilizers, for different things like that. So right. I think this is what's creating the problem because more people are tolerant now because you're getting so much of it. Right. You're not just getting gluten when you're eating bread or pasta or something like that. You're getting in all kinds of foods. You can have like a, you know, a fruit snack, like a dried fruit snack and it has gluten in it for a You know what I mean? So there's lots of things that I think that are contributed to it, but it's definitely, you know, I get a lot of people with these pizza burgers or we have that flagship that stands tall like that with some mozzarella sticks on it. They're like, can I get a grilled flag? Wait, 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 wait. back and back up. What did you say? <laughs> it's called a flagship chicken sandwich. Right. So it's a breaded chicken breast. Right. It has cheddar cheese, right. bacon. We put marinated tomatoes on it, lettuce, onion. We put our dill sauce on it, and we top it with three mozzarella sticks. Okay. So it's, it makes like a fresh flag. mozzarella sticks that you make it. Uh, yes. So the people are like, I need a grilled flagship with grilled chicken, not breaded chicken. I need it on a gluten-free bun. Please make sure there's no gluten. And they're like, well, ma'am, our mozzarella sticks are gluten. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> they want the cheese sticks. <laughs> All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the gluten allergy doesn't matter anymore, right? Because they it's want that gooey cheese. Yes, yes sir. So, yeah. Oh my God, that's yes. funny. Yeah, happens a lot. Let's grab the other dish right there. Awesome. What is that drink in front of you? Oh, you know, that's my favorite drink. What is it? I made you a Caesar, but it's not my favorite. I'm simple again, a simple guy. It's vodka, water, splash of cranberry, and a lime. Light, yeah. refresh, refreshing. That is I, a good drink. I, I drink it all the time. It's a good vodka cranberry is good. I like it. But what's funny is that I watch some people, they will pour almost all cranberry yeah, no, and I like, land vodka. Actually, um, actually, uh, someone in the back made this one. They put a little bit too much cranberry. I'm normally just like it tinted a little, a little bit. Tinted. My wife makes fun of me a little bit. She's like, your drink's pink. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm secure with my sexuality. <laughs> yeah. I, I can have a pink drink. I'm good with it. It's fine with me. Hey, I'll drink any alcohol drink. I'm that, very secure. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I don't discriminate. Yeah. This, is right, our, so this looks really cool. What in the world is this? So, you know what? We're well known for our breakfast. Right. But people don't... Oops. This, okay. is, a, this is a horseradish mayo to uh -huh. put it on the side. But people don't uh, realize... Well, we have some people, but don't what realize... What is this? Have you heard of a Yorkshire pudding? Yeah. Right? So, basically, that's a Yorkshire pudding that we cook in a pie shell to make it like a bonnet. So we make a bonnet out of the Yorkshire pudding recipe. Instead of puffing it up in a pan to make right. it a ball, it's kind of English thing that they serve with a prime rib. Right. We put it in a pie pan to kind of create and put a dish, and that's how we start our bonnet. And then we put some mashed potatoes in there. We put a little sour cream with our pot roast and our gravy and our carrots and green Man, beans. This pot roast is delicious. Is there, is there, I see, oh, I see it. Oh, yeah. This is going to be good. I'm going to make an excuse to eat some more pot roast here. That's it. I don't want a piece That's of that a big bit. piece. God, this looks so good. Smells so good still. It's been sitting here 30 minutes. That's it. It's still warm. I do lots of catering. Uh, I know how to transport food, even though I came for an hour, you know? <laughs> I brought it in my hot box. All but I, think, I think it's so big, <laughs> and there's so much heat in there. <laughs> it's like a mound of heat just oozing the heat still. So. <clears throat> So yeah, and so our dinner dishes are phenomenal. You know, again, we laugh. I get these people say this, you know, for a bunch of, you know, for some Canadian, you sure do make a mean chicken fried steak and the chicken fried chicken. We sell so many chicken fried steaks. This poutine over here, one of my favorite things that we have right now is we do a fried steak poutine. So we take the fried steak, we put that poutine. It comes in a, it comes in a bowl this big, Trey, the poutine. We mound the fries up, put the fried steak on it. And this is the best part about it. We use the brown gravy because I'm from the north. I don't do white gravy like y'all do down here. This brown gravy is delicious. I can't do white gravy. I do brown gravy. So when people 
put the brown gravy with the fried steak, they like go crazy. There was this guy in a restaurant the other day. I was like, hey, it's like next time you have that fried steak, I was like, have a brown gravy. And it was funny enough, he came back the next day to have another fried steak. He had a fried gravy. He's like, I don't know. I'm from the South. I was like, listen, this will change your life. You have it. I said, if you don't like it, I'll buy it for you. Don't you worry. And I'll make you another one. Sure enough, he's like, honestly, I'll tell you right now, I'm never having a fried steak again without brown gravy. He's <laughs> yeah. like, well, yeah, but somebody else's brown gravy is probably not going to taste like your brown yeah, gravy. Yeah, well, you know, I can't do anything about that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you just have to come back and see me, right? Okay, so hang on. So, so let's talk TV So. You're on, besides, you're on my ABC special for Best Breakfast. Yes, sir. Because uh, I truly believe you have one of the best breakfasts in Thank North you, Texas. thank you. We try our best every day. Yeah, you got a great breakfast. You were on, uh, what, what else were you on? We've been on a Food Network show. Jeff Dunham had that Incredible America, Incredible Edible America. Yeah. We were on that show. We were on Food Paradise. They actually featured the pizza burger. Right. Um, when was that, Food Paradise? When was that, that was maybe a year and a half okay. ago or so. Okay. Um, oh, two years ago, I think, um, Food Paradise okay. came in. Um, we Our chicken and waffles, the one that you hate, the chicken, bacon, and uh -huh. waffles, it was featured um, not last year, the year before, in Paula Deen's magazine for right. top 10 chicken and waffles in right. the United States. Um, you know, the news channels love us down there because they bring lots of tables of the food, so they bring us down there yeah. a lot. Um, so, yeah, we get def definitely a bunch, bunch of press, so... It's good, because it's good, that's why. That's it, right? <laughs> so what is your, <clears throat> if someone saw you out somewhere at McDonald's or at, at Del Fresco's or on the side of the road at the park, and they ask you, Mike, what's your favorite thing and your favorite dish at Maple Leaf, what would you say? My favorite dish to eat? Yeah. I'm probably right now, I like that fried steak, um, fried steak poutine that I eat. I like that. And honestly, what I eat every day is our soup. We make our homemade soup every day. And again, that's probably one of my favorite things to make. And cook in the kitchen is soup because I love to like make something out of nothing you know I love to yeah. create something out of nothing and we make different soups all the time you know it kind of drives some of our customers crazy like how come you don't have this soup or that soup and I was like we just we just don't know what we're gonna make every day yeah. you know what I mean we're just yeah. we're just gonna make something different you know a lot but of that's okay that's creativity yeah. you don't know why that's okay you don't you want to be on the same track a lot of restaurants else. have that same soup you know what yeah. I mean they have this you know hey, chicken and broccoli or chicken and mushroom right? bubble. Bubble. exactly yeah. <laughs> but people love our soups our homemade soups and I love making soups so it's 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 definitely good when I get up in the mornings when I get up in the mornings I'm never on the same track when I get up in the mornings I, I look at my I look and I think what am I what am I going to do? And I, I pick between one and 500 tracks. That's a track I go on that day. I don't, I don't ever be on the same track. It's just not, for mm -hmm. me, I want to live life. And that's what y'all are doing over there. Your food, your restaurants, your atmosphere, everything's about living, enjoying, having fun. Yes. The, the atmosphere in there is vibrant. It's important. I mean, vibrant. Oh, it's huge. Service. Hugely. Don't great. worry about having the Cowboys on anymore either. No. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! What are we gonna do with those guys? I can't say anything, you know. <clears throat> I, I know you can't, but right? I, I saw when I was last time I was there, there was a cowboy, uh, like a some kind of show or something in the morning. It was on that yes. screen you had there, and I'm yes. like, oh, just when you walk in, I thought about it. what happened last night. I thought, oh, we don't have to worry about that now. But yeah, for sure. But no, you you touched on a good point. The atmosphere, yeah. I think, is a great. But the service, Very. you know, you can have good food, but if you don't get your food properly, if you don't have that bright, cheery smile, I think service goes a long way. You know, I think even some of these restaurants that aren't even that great with food, if they have great service and great, you know, people that know your name or know your order, or right. know, and we have, we have crazy longevity for our employees. Our employees really like to have a lot. My probably, we've only been open four years, and I think my average employee has probably been there about three years. See, that's good. Low turnover is important. Yeah, so we have a good core group, and so, you know, you get those people that, uh, that they get served all the time. They come in all the time. They know what they're going to drink or they know what they're going to eat, and, you know, you know, just take care of people that way. Yeah. One of my servers was just telling me in the morning how, how uh, thankful she was. We had a little mishap in the restaurant yesterday, but how, how thankful we, uh, she was. She, one of her regulars that come in all the time, they end up giving her like $200 or something for Christmas. You know, it's just uh, so you can tell, you know, how much service and how nice you got to be for someone to give them $200. Oh, yeah. What you said, you had a mishap in a restaurant. You only had uh, one mishap? On, on, no, well, <laughs> yesterday's mishap. Let's just say <laughs> yesterday's mishap. That's what my wife says to me. She says, how come you're, you operate in emergencies? Everything's always an emergency with you. How come How come everything's an emergency? My wife's smart. She's got an MBA from SMU, yeah. and she's like, you know, you got to manage your time better. you got to time block. I was like, honey, I can't time block for the stuff that happens to me in the restaurant, right? The paper power was down. So uh, oh, that's an emergency. It was like they only had one leg of our phase went up. It burned my 
burned my hood fan out, had to replace my hood fan motor. We were closed for five hours. A little bit of disaster yesterday. Yeah, a little big... bit, a little bit. That's that's what you call a mishap. But we got right? it all back together, and it's all. You know, you could have said, "Oh, your restaurant was just filled up with smoke." Yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's really funny. So how do you? Uh, I, I haven't asked you this yet. Where where does all your create your creative side come from, or your inspiration for all your dishes besides just these? Would obviously your favorite. But like, if if you're creating a new dish, where do you pull draw inspiration from? Canada, from Texas, put both. Because I know your I know your slogan is a little bit of Canada and Texas. Yeah, so. you got to just try to bring a little bit of things, and also we try to you know mesh the southern to the you know Canadian or right. a little flair or. You know, take some southern dish, add Canadian, or like you said, you know, we talked about, you know, where I was at, you know, bringing a little bit of Jewish influence, or just kind of just taking whatever comes or whatever. You know, you talk a lot about trends. Right. You know what I mean? So if you're going to take the new kind of trendy thing and kind of give your own spin on it, but I'm pretty kind of simple kind of guy. So I like to keep the I like to keep the staples that you know people love yeah. and expect, and also you know. I guess kind of just build on that and, and, and you know, simple foods and simple flavors. <laughs> so how many, how many have you, have you been into a restaurant or heard that somebody has copied your dish or tried to copy your dish at other restaurants? You know what? There's all kind of stuff like that happens all the time, but you know what? Some of my uh, family uh, taught me a long time ago. You only worry about your four walls. That's right. No, that's right. <laughs> you that's know right. what I mean? Yeah. You can't do, you can't do really anything about it. You know, that's very smart, though. You can't. You just, we just. You know what? It's you just make it better. Just you know what? You just wake up every day, do the best job that you can, and that's I, all you can do. You I, know. I say all the time, you can't control what happens around you. It only controls what happens with you or, or between you and whoever. So it's a, it's a very. Uh, you know, my you know. dad died when he was young. I was 21. He was 43 years old. Oh, was it heart attack? No, he had cancer. Oh, okay. You know, down in Canada and Windsor area around the Great Lakes is pretty high cancer rate. So. And uh, so he died when he was young, and he used to have this poster, and it was kind of this cheesy kind of poster of this guy kayaking, but I'll never forget it, and he always pointed. It was, you know, life's like 1% of what happens to you and 99% of how you deal with it, you know? That's right. And you that's, said it's cheesy, but you never forgot it, did you? Never forgot. Well, it was a cheesy picture. You know, it was like one of those. <laughs> was he in a canoe rowing? Yeah, it was like a kayak guy or something, you know? I think it something was like, I'm never going to do. Was, I'm not getting in a kayak. Because yeah. if you get in a kayak, too many things can happen. Like you roll upside down and you drown yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you've had whiskey. Well, you're from Texas, though, right? Yeah, but I'm going to get in a kayak. Yeah, so you're, you're going to get on a horse. horse. There you go, not on a river, right? Every day, uh -huh. any day of the week, but I won't get on a kayak. Exactly. Get in a kayak. Exactly. Well, you're, you, I can't, when I'm on a river, I mean, you. it's it's a lot of variables going on It's a little on there. dicey, a little dicey. A little dicey, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I especially if you're not used to it, right? I can jump off a horse and I'm on the ground. That's it. Jump, you jump in a river, you're in a river. Uh-huh, <laughs> exactly, for sure. All right, so what what is uh, what do you have coming up from April? Anything, anything special coming up? Any any holiday deals or anything? You know, not really. I don't do too many deals. We you know, we just kind of push out our great food. We, you know, we're going to do probably a little something for a little different. We have Boxing Day coming up. Do you know what Boxing Day is? No, what is that? It's a kind of a holiday in Canada. It's the day after Christmas. They call it Boxing Day. I think it came from everybody boxing up all their crap and returning it after they get it. So. <laughs> Wait, I thought you meant boxing like this. No. You're talking about boxing. Boxing Day. Well, you can take I, it any way you I, want. I right? thought you meant boxing like yeah, beat the hell out of somebody yeah. didn't, didn't give me We're the gift some I wanted. Gloves in there and let them go at it. So. so it's called Boxing Day is in box. Yeah, they call it Boxing Day. It's like a holiday in Canada. So, you know, I like to play on, uh, we do all our Canadian holidays here. I don't serve Thanksgiving meal at American Thanksgiving. We serve it on the Canadian Thanksgiving, which is... Okay. Uh, Columbus Day. Every time it's Columbus Day here, that's Canadian Thanksgiving. So we do a okay. huge turkey stuffing, and uh, all the Canadians come out to have their Canadian Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving. So cool. So yeah. So tell me, if people want to get a hold of Maple Leaf, how they do it? You can go on our Facebook, Maple Leaf Diner. We got our website, uh, mldiner.com. 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 And uh, you can look. You search Instagram. You search Canadian. You search Canadian restaurant on the computer. There, there's only one. So come on. Oh, there, there's only one. Yeah, That's I know. It. I only one maple leaf too. That's it. Yes. So. So what? Um, so what? Uh, are y'all closed for uh, uh, Christmas? Yeah, Christmas Day and Thanksgiving, I will not open. Oh, that's it's, good. It's, that's good. I can't. I can't. It. No one wants to work that day, and I don't want to work when there's an emergency. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. Because you know there's gonna be one, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Mike, I really appreciate you hey, coming in, buddy. thanks a lot for I, having me. I really appreciate I, I, it. I really enjoy it. So if you're trying to get a hold of us, as always, it's uh, tracechowdown.com. You can go to you can see all our shows, you can see all our blogs, all our stories, uh, get all our links to all our, our social media, 
Uh, you can email us if you have a dining question in, uh, in the North Texas area. Uh, and we look forward to seeing y'all next week. Y'all need to tune in. Or also, too, they can get us now at TC on the TCN network. On the app, you can go to, I think it's t- uh, TexasCountryNetwork.net. Is that right, Ron? TexasCountryNetwork.net. Gosh, I hope so. Harry Ann promoting the show. Don't even know you the better get it right. Oh, my God. Just Google Texas to Tech. TCNCountry.net. There you Isn't go. Isn't that terrible? There Good you go. Gosh. Well, it's new to you. It's still oh new. I'm going to let gosh. you off the hook on that one, you know, because oh it's still new for you. Terrible. Anyway, t- uh, th- th- one more time, Ron. No, I think it's net. <laughs> TCNCountry.net. TC, the net, the dot net is what threw me. So go. TCN.net, and you, you can get all the country music shows. You can get videos. we got lifestyle shows. We've got my show. Mike here, nice, nice, <laughs> and other shows. Uh, we we are we are uh, have a sh- we have a great show next week. It's with the uh, Hutchinson Barbecue people out nice. of uh, McKinney. Uh, we look forward to that, and we'll see y'all next week, same time, same bad channel. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks to you. Trey Chapman, publisher of TraceChowdown.com. I'm passionate about finding the best food, drinks, and chefs to sharing it all with you. I should know I have over five decades of food experience. Find me on any podcast platform, Facebook Live, or just Google me. Now you can watch and listen to all my great finds every week on my live TV and radio podcast at Trey's Chowdown Live.